You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, B&B fans. It is Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I'm excited to bring you early edition spoilers. These are for the week of December 11th through 15th. We have a lot to unpack, lots going on with Eric, lots going on with Bridget, Fenn, a lot more front storyline action. I'm excited to share these with you, but first, if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates, spoilers, and news. Real quick... By now, you should have seen Monday and Tuesday's episode, possibly Wednesdays, depending on when you're watching this. But I'm going to just recap the spoilers for you for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because these are really important. They lay the groundwork for next week's spoilers for the 11th through the 15th. All right, let's dig in. So on Wednesday, we already have Thorn Forrester back and we have Bridget back. They have both been invited for Eric's big gala. The problem is realistically, his other kids should be back and other family members, Ivy Forster, Felicia Forster, Rick Forster, you know, another kid. The problem is the party invitation went out just for a party. If it was an invitation, oh, come to town because Eric is dying, then you'd expect more people to come. I don't expect them to bring back Jacob Young and all that. I just, it's too much. But as soon as Bridget and Thorne are back, They are told by the family about what's going on with Eric's fatal illness. Here's what I'm wondering. (laughs) Is Ridge or his hype woman Brooke or his mini me RJ going to also tell them, oh, by the way, Eric lost the fashion challenge. So this party, you know, the whole basis is a lie because they just can't not tell people. And as frustrating as I think it is for all of us to see Ridge doing this, I think it's not for nothing. And I think something very bad is going to come out of this constant chatter about it. And that is teased also on Friday. We'll dig in in just a second. So Eric kicks off his big last blast gala on Wednesday and he's toasting his family. He's so glad everybody's there. He knows he's dying. He's scared, but he has no choice but to face it. So hopefully there'll be some good news out of this though on thursday the 7th eric goes around and to each party guest and he shares special moments i think we might get flashbacks flashbacks of eric and thorn years ago you know eric eric ridge eric brooke whatever here's what frustrates me i think we're getting these flashbacks to try and make us really sad about eric dying but because we don't know what the heck eric is dying of it's more frustrating than sad because it feels like there's just there's just a lie that we're being told right so i feel like they think that they are moving us to tears but they are for me at least and i know a lot of you guys agree i see in the comments are moving us to frustration and borderline anger anger because they just haven't said it's this like lung cancer because we see this week he's got an oxygen tank at the house he's spitting up blood lung cancer makes sense and they don't have to come out with a miracle cure for lung cancer if they want to save him all they have to do is come out and say oh it was misdiagnosed it's this other thing that's that's treatable you know so speaking of treatable on Thursday Lee is not happy to see Finn busy researching a medical case instead of being at the party standing next to his wife's death side. Finn thinks it's more important that he, you know, save her granddad's life. But Lee, of course, is worried about the ongoing threat to his marriage. And because she's worried about it in the spoilers, I do wonder if Liam might slip into the party and try to sidle up beside Steffi and play, you know, husband for the night or something equally sketchy. We'll see. On Friday the 8th, we have Eric making what he thinks is his final speech. And I'm sure he's going to say something about the fashion challenge and winning it and how proud he is of his line. Meanwhile, Donna overhears something at the party and she's very, very upset about it. Guess what she overhears? She overhears that Eric didn't really win the fashion challenge. And I I mean, she could hear it from anybody at the party. Literally the only people at the party who don't know, you know, that I know are on the expected guest list are Donna and Eric. And Donna's going to be furious about the lies. I think frantic, worried that Eric is going to hear. And I do think Eric is going to hear. And I think that's going to play out into spoilers coming December 11th through 15th. So because Eric is doing his speech on Friday, the party may carry over onto Monday the 11th. What we do know, what we have seen, Eric is deteriorating fast. You know, he had that collapse at the house and Donna literally thought he died 
died, but he pulled through. I I hope he's going to make it through this big party without a collapse, but I, I don't know. I do think it might be the best thing If Eric does collapse in front of everyone for two reasons. First, because everything will be out in the open. And then maybe Eric doesn't need to know that they all knew and we're just kind of sitting on it. Maybe it'll kind of organically be revealed, at least from Eric's perception, you know, where he won't be like, oh, you've all been lying to me. But what I'm very concerned about is that Eric may have a particularly bad episode if he hears people whispering at the party about Ridge being the one who really run the fashion challenge because Ridge can't shut up about it. Neither can Brooke. And now RJ has joined the curse. Of course, why? Why do they need to keep telling people this? It's not a sacrifice if it if if you're coming behind it and saying, oh, no, no, this is the truth, you know? So Eric is, you know, supposedly dying, but he's not senile and his ears work just fine. I'm kind of hoping that Eric does have a collapse, a non-fatal collapse, so that Ridge will feel guilty for blabbing. And, you know, I think people might be mad because they might see that Ridge caused the collapse, not because of the lie, but because he couldn't shut up about the truth. So I don't want to hear any more about how he is a hero, yada, yada, yada. He's not. He's an egotist who can't just let his dad die in peace. And he's talking about how much he loves his dad and how much he'll miss him. But actions speak louder than words. And I hear his words. He can't stop telling people he really won the fashion challenge. So I feel like it has to come out. So, uh, you know, they're still insulting us by not naming the deadly disease, but there is a silver lining. We've got Finn busy working on this case now that Bridget's in town and knows her dad is dying. She's going to be on the case. We have special cameo star Sari Fields from Big Brother coming week after next, and she's going to be consulting on Eric's case. So maybe she's that one last expert they need to help them crack it, save Eric's life. Maybe it's a misdiagnosis. Maybe he's been poisoned. Maybe it's something else. I, I feel like we're going to get a Christmas miracle. The problem is I'm not emotional emotionally invested because they haven't given me enough information to get me invested. It's like if you ever see something on a TV show or in a book or a play where it's obvious that they're trying to make you cry, that they're trying, to, it's, it's a deliberate tearjerker, that doesn't work for me. I have to to build up to it. I have to feel involved. I have to feel sympathy and empathy and all that. And because they're lying to us by not giving a diagnosis, I feel very certain at this point that Eric's not going to die. You know, maybe John McCook's going to step back to recurring and not be honest much. That's fine. He's an older actor, but I, I just don't feel like... Like he's actually going to die just the way that they're taking everything. And so I just feel at this point jerked around. I don't know if you guys do, but I'm very frustrated. So even if it is a Christmas miracle, I'm going to be like, oh, I wasn't really invested anyway. And I don't think he's going to live because John McCook has a three-year contract because that's been debunked. He does not. But... Bold likes to fake us out. They like to give fake spoilers. They like to do fake promos. And they basically like to trick with daydream scenes and just stuff like that. And so I just feel like maybe they're gaslighting us. So next week, also look for more of Thomas and Hope. I'm excited about that. And I also expect more scenes of Liam Spencer getting darker and sketchier in his desperate pursuit of Steffi. Hey, if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates, spoilers, and news. Definitely drop your comments on what you think about these ongoing storylines and what you're hoping to see next week and come back very soon because I'm here talking bold with you guys seven days a week. As always, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 